Hello, I'm Jeremy Stein with the Center for Holy Land Studies. Today is December 12th, a day like any other for many of us watching this video. However, tonight, as the sun sets in Jewish homes all throughout the entire world, a beautiful celebration will begin, a celebration of remembrance and worship, commemorating the rededication of the Temple of the Lord by lighting candles, and will last for eight nights. Often in Christianity, we overlook the holiday of Hanukkah simply because of the importance of Christmas that it plays inside our own lives, never truly understanding the biblical significance that the holiday plays for us as Christians. See, if we open up the Bible and look inside the Old Testament, we don't see the holiday mentioned anywhere. However, when we open our New Testament in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, we find that Jesus is in the temple celebrating the holiday of Hanukkah. So where did this holiday come from? Why do we find Jesus celebrating it? And what does it mean for us? The extra-biblical historical accounts of Josephus, as well as 1 Maccabees, tell us that roughly 160 years before the birth of Jesus, Israel was living under the rule of the pagan Greek forces of the Seleucids, the descendants of the generals of Alexander the Great. The Seleucids under their king Antiochus IV were brutally oppressive to the Jewish people. Laws were passed that made it a capital offense for any boy to be circumcised, for any man to have possession of scripture, and for any observance of the Sabbath or the dietary restrictions. Not only did he cease the daily sacrifices at the temple in Jerusalem, as well as the high holy days, but also Antiochus carried out a sacrifice of a pig, an unclean animal, upon the altar of the temple of the Lord and dedicated the temple then to Zeus. He went on to plunder the temple of all its sacred treasures, removing them for his own gain. This was a very dark time for the children of God. Many, both young and old, died painful deaths of crucifixion for their love of God. Women were strangled as they tried to keep the commandments in their homes. The flesh of young men was ripped apart until death simply for desiring to read the words of the Lord. It was a time of little hope for those who truly loved the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And even after that, in 167 BC, Antiochus, in his desire to continue to subjugate the Jewish nation as best as he could, proceeded to send pagan priests with armed escorts along with private altars to each of the towns in the land of Israel, forcing the Jewish priests of each village to sacrifice upon this pagan altar to show their fealty to Antiochus. As the portable altar arrived in the small town of Modin, a short distance from Jerusalem, the eldest priest, Mattathias ben Yochanan, a descendant of Phineas, the man of zeal in Numbers 25, refused to sacrifice upon the pagan altar. Immediately upon his refusal, though, a young priest steps forth and carries out the sacrifice in a fit of zealous anger for the Lord. Mattathias and his five sons step up and slaughter the envoy of Greeks in the village, as well as the young Jewish priest, and call all those that still had love and zeal for the Lord to follow them. He and his sons and all those who would follow them, both young and old, fled into the wilderness and began fighting a war of independence. After over two years of fighting, Mattathias dies and leaves the burden of leadership to his son Judas, who by this time has become an accomplished warrior. Under Judas's guerrilla warfare attack strategy, he and his men are able to take back the temple in 164 BC. When he and his men reach the temple, the sight makes each man weep. The location that was once the dwelling place for the presence of God was now an unclean place. And so they began to purge the temple of everything. They destroyed the previous sacrificial altar and built a new one. They destroyed the table of showbread, the menorah, the incense altar, and they cast new ones. And they even went as far as to tear down all the linens and veils and doors and replace them with all new so that they could never be reminded of the connection that this temple shared with the impurity that it had bore. And therefore so, after three years of desolation, the temple was once more made a place of worship of the God of Israel. In later periods of the 4th and 5th century AD, the story of Hanukkah transforms into a story that upon the dedication of the temple, there was a lack of oil. But miraculously, the menorah of the temple stayed burning for eight nights. However, this does not appear in the historical texts of Josephus or of 1 Maccabees. Instead, they focus on the true miracle of Hanukkah. 
that a small group of Jewish rebels could stand against a mighty kingdom and restore the name and the ways of the one true God back to the land of Israel. The Gospel of John reflects this in chapter 10 by referring to the holiday by its proper name, the Festival of Dedication, to remind its audience of the purpose of Jesus being there in the temple, to remember that it is a place dedicated to God, The presence of Jesus celebrating this holiday stands as a testament to us today. Though we might not be Jewish and we might not be used to the idea of celebrating this holiday, it becomes imperative to remind ourselves that we and the Jewish nation serve the same God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in taking time to observe this holiday, we too can be reminded that no matter what external forces of the world might stand in front of us or what they might bring against us, we are called to remain in the path of righteousness, standing firm and zealous in our faith, knowing that ultimately we will see victory in the name of the Lord.